2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Turn yourself on, please. Yeah, I did. Okay, thank you. Yes, it is, it is on. All right. How well do you know your wife? I don't. <laughs> An honest man. No. Was Paul married? Yeah, Paul, by the way, Paul wrote this verse, but he was not married. Okay. But let, let's liken it on to husband and wife. How well do you know your wife? All right. How well do you know your husband? Do you know everything? No, you still don't know everything. Uh, do you know them better now than you did at the beginning? You know them better. All right. It, well, for better, which which well, for better or for worse? You know them better. Or how many know them for worse? I, I just thought about that. She won't answer that question. That's rhetorical. Senator, I refuse to answer that question. Yeah, I refuse to answer that question. Yeah, that's just all too bad, you know. Uh, you know, I, uh, uh, let me give you, yeah, you, listen, you don't have to agree with me. Uh, who can dress a woman better, a man or a woman? Hey, don't point to yourself, Starla. A man or a woman? Who dresses a woman better? A man? Uh, now you already know where I'm going with that one. What's the answer? A woman? Boy, I couldn't disagree with you more. All right, if you get a catalog, a woman's catalog for clothes, uh, name off some of these. I never knew these catalogs until we got into a fundamental Baptist church. You get a catalog to buy what? whose clothes? Name off some names. Sears. Well, one is R. His name starts by his R and L, not Sears. Rolex? Say, no, no, say it again. No. <laughs> no. Ralph Lauren. Well, is that a guy or a girl? All right. All right. It, it's usually. <laughs> no. No. A, 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 a woman is always dressed better by her husband. And then I am not here one to parade people. This is what a Christian is to look like. Oh, please, just give me a break. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't get into that. But a, a man can all, I, I really do believe this. I, I, I heard this preached and I thought, well, I always believed that. I always did believe that. That a man is better at, other than having a baby, than at everything than a woman. Now, who believes that? And the guys don't dare raise their hand. <laughs> now, I believe that. I believe that with all my heart, that a man is better at everything than a woman. Now, are there women that are better? I, I don't cook. Are there women that are better cooks than me? Well, sure there are. Are there women that are stronger than me? Well, sure there are. Women are stronger than me. Are there women that can play the piano better than me? Well, sure, of course. But when it filters out to the, to the top dog, it's always going to be a man. That the woman is designed to be the helpmeet, not to be in charge. <laughs> well, explain that to Hill. Well, that's up to Bill <laughs> to explain that. I mean, he probably doesn't dare do that. Well, anyway, our, uh, our title tonight, you say, well, what does that have to do? Well, at least you know how I feel about things. Anyway, uh, it, it's 2 Timothy 3, verses 10 and verse 11. Father, bless now the preaching tonight, and that it would be edifying, fruitful, giving us uh, the skills or tools to be able to tell somebody else, Lillian and Rose, somebody else about these things so that it can enhance their life and help them. In Christ's name, amen. But thou hast fully, fully known, all right, knowing Paul, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, 
which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, the title to, tonight is getting to, now listen you girls, girls, I'm going to have to separate you. All right, and I will. All right? Any more, and I'm going to move one of you on the other side of Ben. Okay? All right? All right. Okay, now, let's look, getting, my title tonight is Getting to Know You. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. What? I'm sure that came from a movie. It's from a yeah. Broadway play. A Broadway play. That became a movie. That, and what is that? Do you, anybody know? Oh, that is... The King and I. The King and I. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Uh, is the King of Siam, is that the, is that uh, Gil Brenner? Oh, that is. I've never It was watched. originally a play that was made into a musical, and both really? the play and the musical... Uh, I, I like the uh, song. Usually the music is better than the movie, you know. It's like the book uh, is better than the movie. Yeah, in the musical, Yule Brenner played the king in the actual original play that came I'm trying really? to remember. Noel Harrison, I not Noel Harrison. Rex oh, Harrison. Rex Harrison. Oh, wow. Now we're, we are revealing our secrets. <laughs> yeah, now, see, we're getting to know you. We're getting to know you. Now, listen, I have never watched the movie. It never, you know, you'd see clips. It just doesn't interest me. If I get, I, it, it might be too late. I'm already dozing off, and I'm not really interested. But uh, you try to get to know a person generally before you get married. And, and this has nothing to do with, uh, we can make it about husbands and wife, but uh, uh, Rich said, well, uh, I, I don't, basically he doesn't have a wife, but Paul wrote this. And Paul didn't have a, a wife. And, and getting to know, know you, and I, and I have uh, written down here as a subtitle, Let Me Count the Ways. Uh, isn't that Shakespeare, uh, Romeo and Juliet? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Is uh, How I Love You, Let Me Count the Ways. Is how that, I Love Thee, Let Me Count the Ways. Is that a, some poem or is that Shakespeare? What is that? <coughs> Anybody know? Is that Browning or I don't know? Oh, you're saying it could be Evangeline or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. I, I don't know. But if you don't do the thumb thing right now, please. He's doing the thumb thing. Okay. Oh, he was, he was tempted. It's over there. Oh, it's over there. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought you were reaching for your holster. <laughs> okay, but getting to know you. And so let's count the ways. Thou hast fully known, number one, my doctrine. And this is not illiterate. It's alliterated, but not alliterated like you think it's alliterated. My doctrine, that's one. Manner of life, that's two. Purpose, that's three. Faith, that's four. Long-suffering, that's five. Charity, that's six. Patience, that's seven. Persecutions, that's eight. Afflictions, that's nine. Nine ways. Nine ways to get to know a person. All right, so when you, uh, when you get to know a person and you, uh, you meet this person you, and you go out and you, you, uh, you, you start to ask questions about this person, uh, what do you like, uh, what, 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 give me, let, we could have some class participation. What would you say, what would you, you know, uh, what, well, what's your name? What's your favorite color? Huh? What's your favorite color? Oh, I was going to, yeah, I didn't write these things down. Yeah, that, yeah. What's your favorite color? Like it matters. Honey, what is your favorite color? I haven't asked you that in 46 years. No, I don't know. What is it? Oh, green is your... Oh, you, that's why you wanted grasslands in the hallway upstairs. Green. All right, green is your favorite color. Well, uh, give me another one. Say that again. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where? And by the way, where were you from? Varma, okay, from Varma. And who put that on the map, by the way? Goulardi put that on the map. I think nationally, that thing got, that got established. All right, where are you from, your, your uh, heritage? Give me another one. Do you have a car? Do you have a car? <laughs> Do you have a car? Uh, well, all right, give me another one. Oh, your education, how smart are you? Education. 
And uh, depending on your education doesn't depend on how smart you are. You know, smart and intelligence and wisdom, those are uh, different things in understanding. But yeah, education is important. Uh, give me another one. You wouldn't ask the girl, how much money do you have? <laughs> give me another one. Even though that is important to some people. What is it you like to do? Now that could tie in with a little bit here. What is it you like to do? Uh, what is it you like to do, Mrs. T? Cook? Before you were married, girl, you didn't cook. So, did you sew before you were married? Really? Okay, so cook. I know you didn't like to clean, because we walked around the block. She complained about my mother-in-law. She making me clean the house. I'm thinking, all the while walking around, you know, I don't want to upset the apple cart here and thinking, well, you do live there, you know, you got to do something, you know. Cook, clean, what else? Come on, something a little more exciting. What do you want to be when you, well, uh, technically we were already grown up. <laughs> what do you want to, well, that's a good question. What do you want to be when you want to become? That, that's a good question, but that's generally for a younger person like yourself. What kind of music, TV shows? What kind of music do you listen to? What kind of television shows? Now, generally speaking, we had the same taste there because we were living in the same planet on the 358, 43 and 61. So there wasn't a lot to pick from, right? So you, you were stuck there. And WKYC, WHK, it was still on, was it still on AM or was FM in too? So it was a little bit of mixture of both. FM was coming in. But yet WKYC, they actually still played music on AM. All right, your music, what do you like to, uh, wait, what you said music and what was the other one? TV show. Oh, te television, yeah. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, what do you like to eat? What do you want on your pizza? That, it's, it's pretty, that, most of that's pretty shallow. Yeah. Any, right? Any that, sports you enjoy? You know. say, say it again. Any sports you may enjoy? Like. Oh, oh, sports, yeah. Now, she went to me, with me to the arena. We would go to the arena. It held 8,000 people. It's a parking lot. The arena it held 8,000 people. I went there to see big time wrestling. Uh, Tex McKenzie wrestled, uh, uh, oh, the big black guy. I can't think of his name. It wasn't Bobo Brazil. Oh, well, but we went to go see hockey. The wife and I would go watch the hockey, and then I realized, oh, listen, that Monsters is, you know, I didn't include that in the sermon. We can include the Monsters in that. That's minor league, folks. And if you get all excited about it, I mean, people are into this stuff. But we would go, why did we go? To watch the Bears. Then I found out it was minor league. Why do you go? Why did the wife and I go to watch the Barons? For a date. Huh? For a date. For a date because we had what? <clears throat> Nothing Better else to do. to do. I was in college and there was I remember a guy. He had a uh, uh, this twirly thing. Do you remember that? And he go da da. da. He would whistle it. Da 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 and it would twist up. It, well, you never knew where the, the whistling was coming from. Well, when he sold the thing, the whistling didn't come with it. He was doing the whistling. You know, it was kind of like false advertising. I thought, wow, that thing whistles like that. But it did. I was, I was full. I didn't buy it, though. I didn't make the purchase. We were at big time wrestling, folks. Is that pretend? Is that acting? Folks, there were fist fights, fist fights in the, in the arena, in the stands over this. And then I was there with Tom Estock, and I, we said, let's get out of here before we're next. I mean, they were battling it out, fist fighting over, over this uh, uh, Ernie Ladd. Text me, anybody remember Ernie Ladd? Text McKenzie and big Ernie Ladd. And they were, they were fist fighting over and, uh, and all of it was pretend. But this, I really believe, this is a good checklist to find out what a person, how to really get to know a person. Really get to know a person. Uh, Paul writes the list. I, I think it's accurate. It, can it be expanded upon? I mean, these nine points, it'd be a lifetime. Amen? Our first one. Knowing what you believe. 
And what is that, the doctor? What do you believe? I can't even remember if we talked about those things. What do you believe? Uh, we never talked about God, did we? You went to a church. I know that the parents wanted her to marry a good Catholic boy. So I converted. I, I became the, the convert, and that didn't go over. That went over like a lead balloon. It didn't go over well. But what you believe, 2 Timothy 3.16, we're already there. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, we're still right there. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What is it you believe? Doctrine, all anything that's taught in the Bible is a doctrine. Is a doctrine. 2 Peter uh, 3. Uh, verses 15 and 16. We don't, uh, you know, I do have verses for everything tonight, so we're going to move around a little bit. Uh, about what Paul writes, an account, an account that, uh, that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation is our, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. So some of his doctrine is easy, and some of it is tough. But what you actually believe is probably first, first and foremost, as to what you need to know about a person. And uh, getting to know, it, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to marry this person, or chum around with this person. Just the fact is to get to know that person, whoever that person is. What is it do they believe? Uh, and, if it, and if it's dealing with the Bible, heaven, hell. Uh, Abe was over the house today and uh, he talked about women's, we, I, what did I always call women's live? Women's what? I, just three letters instead of L I B L I. Say it out loud, man. Lip. I called it women's lip. Like well, what? What is this? He said that uh, that women's lip has infiltrated even all the churches. I remember one time, Cleveland Baptist, uh, Pastor Thompson said something, and he ducked behind, and you know, uh, jokingly but seriously, ducked behind the uh, pulpit. I'm thinking he on it and talk behind the pulpit. It is what it is. Uh, ultimately, I think that's what made him quit. He had enough of it. And he sounded off one night about it, and he, he said, that's it. I'm done with you. With, with all that. It has infiltrated everywhere. Everywhere. What is it you believe about heaven, about hell, about our stay here on this earth, about how to get to heaven. Is there, is there a heaven? Is there hell? Your doctrine. What is it you believe and why do you believe it? It's built upon facts. Facts, a faith is built upon facts, not feelings. Not warm, fuzzy feelings. Well, I think that God would be, it doesn't matter what a person thinks. It, it matters what this book says. And Paul uh, based his belief on his doctrine. What is my doctrine? What is it that you believe? I can't even remember anything yet you and I talked about. I cannot, I can't, and probably I don't want to remember. Don't need to go back there and remember. I can't even remember anything. Can you remember? You went fishing with me. Did you go willingly or reluctantly? The W word or the R word? You be honest, it was R all the way, man, reluctantly. But she went, you know. She knew I liked to fish. I mean, and, and that isn't instrumental or a must. I mean, that, that's pretty shallow stuff, folks. That's shallow. But knowing what a person believes in their doctrine about Jesus Christ, the devil, uh, the apostles, the church in general, and religious instruction is extremely, extremely, and probably the most important. I mean, he lists it first. It is the most important. What a person believes generally then dictates how they live. 
doesn't it? It dictates then how they live, what a person believes. To the uh, major doctrines, to the, the most minor of doctrines. The major of doctrines to the most minor of doctrines. Knowing what you believe. You know, I know how, and then that those things that a person believes dictates their lifestyle. Look at 2 Timothy, here we are, his has fully known my doctrine, manner of life. Knowing a person's lifestyle. <clears throat> what, what do you believe in knowing your lifestyle? When do most men and, and most men and women work? What, what, what are their hours? Nine to five? <coughs> uh, well, it, say that again? Graveyard shift. Graveyard shift? Okay. Well, we know that's a falsehood. <laughs> but he said it on purpose. What, what, what do most men and women work? Eight to five. Eight to five. You don't start at nine, do you? No, you start earlier, but eight to five. And they have an hour off for lunch. If it's a half hour, it's eight to 4.30 or in that range, eight, eight to five. So when does, a, uh, when, when my wife worked, when my wife worked, and let's say she started, what time did you start, eight or nine? You started at eight. When did, when did that girl get out of bed? You, you know what? You uh, you hit the nail right on the head. She would get up at six, maybe even earlier. Like, like really? She would get up at six o'clock. All right. After she quit work, when did she get up? <laughs> nine? <Five. laughs> no, <laughs> no. She didn't get up at five, and she didn't get up at nine. But she got up more like seven to eight o'clock in there. Seven to eight, but she didn't get up at six. I, I didn't rate as much as, as what the boss demanded, you know. But your lifestyle, your lifestyle, what you believe dictates how you live. What time you're going to get up? What time you go to bed? What do you do at lunchtime? And, and so on. Your life, so what do you do on your day off? What do you do? Are you going to sleep in on your day off? Are you, what, what is it you're going to do? Your lifestyle. And you get to know a person's lifestyle by watching them. And what they do. Observation. By, by sight. But watching this. Hearing their voice and so on. We, we, I called her every night. When, when I uh, did, wasn't seeing her during... I only, I only saw the wife on the weekend. Friday night. Saturday night and then and then Sunday during the afternoon Friday Saturday and Sunday, but I didn't go see I wasn't a church person I didn't go to church. So when did you I don't even remember when you went to church You went to church Sunday and then you switched to the Saturday Catholic thing, right? Did you go to Saturday and then I come and see it? What did I bring you every Friday night? I brought her flowers not some Friday I brought her flowers every Friday. Every Friday I brought her flowers. <laughs> Knowing your, your lifestyle. Romans chapter 9. Now it, this is connected with spiritual things. What Paul did, he, would, he followed his conscience in Romans chapter 9 verse 1. I, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience, he followed his lifestyle, was dictated by his conscience. Also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I might have great heaviness, peace, or on my heart. For he wished he, wished he was a curse from Christ to save his kin, kin. I mean, that was part of it. Not all of his lifestyle, but part of his lifestyle. He was willing to sell him out, himself out, and go to hell to save his kinsmen, which you can't do. Jesus did that. Jesus did that. All he could do was preach it, but he followed his conscience. And so a person follows their conscience of what they believe will dictate what their lifestyle is. What the, now people can and do change. People can and do change. But, and who generally does this change? I mean, it, uh, spouses try to change people, and it can, it can work. But generally, it's the Holy Spirit that makes these changes. 
knowing your lifestyle. Here, it's our next one, our manner of life, my doctrine, manner of life, knowing your purpose, a purpose. Philippians chapter 3. Now, this was Paul's purpose. Now, this doesn't mean this was your purpose when you met your husband or your wife. And you might have different purposes with your life. But people have a purpose of living. And what is their goal in life? And Paul had different goals. And this was his main one. And, and uh, verses 9 through 14. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. This is his purpose. And the fellowship of his suffering me made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And not as though I had already attained. He wasn't already there. He's still in the flesh. But I follow after. If I may apprehend that for which I all which also I am apprehended of Christ. He wanted to apprehend heaven, but Christ already apprehended and captured him. Right, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That was his purpose. So in small talk, when you get to know the wife, and when you get to know the husband, what is it you want to, you know, we have short-term uh, goals, short-term goals. Uh, after service, a short-term goal, Ben and I plan to go fishing. I mean, we, we plan to do that, and maybe even in the dark. That's a pretty short-term goal, but a long-term goal. What is it you want to accomplish a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? That is a purpose. What was, I can't even think, what was, what was your purpose? I can't even think, I mean, you didn't want to be a secretary. You hated it. You really hated it. The wife hated working. The day, the moment, the second she found out she was going to have a baby, what did the wife do? Two words she said to the boss. I quit. I'm out of here, man. She wanted to quit. She didn't want to be a secretary. But did you have some goals? I, I, don't, I remember I wanted 10 kids. I ended up with 10. I got seven and three, right? Starla, uh, Lee, and, uh, uh, and Anthony. I named you before I named the other two. Ah, 10. Remember, I wanted 10 kids. What was your, did you have a goal? I don't even remember your goals. No? I'm a goal-oriented goal, goal person. You know, I, I have a goal. I have short-term goals, what I'm going to do right now. I have long-term goals. Uh, Paul's goal was to be like Christ and to know the fellowship of his suffering, to press towards the mark and the high calling of God. Now, I still have, we have goals. We built a church. Uh, it, we finished it. We finished the, the structure. We finished that. I have a goal to uh, do a, a book. I have, I have goals. Do you have goals, folks? What is your purpose? Look at these young girls here. These young girls here. You have a dream. In your heart, you have a dream. You may watch a movie or TV or cartoon, I don't know, but you watch Grandma and Grandpa. You have a dream. And now I'm not asking you what is your dream, but you already have a dream in your heart and you have a purpose and a goal that you want to fulfill. Don't say they're too young for that. But Paul, knowing your purpose, this other person who knows your purpose and goal, goal tells you a lot about that person. What is their goal? People who have no purpose are like wandering nomads, just wandering about with no purpose, no direction, no destination in mind. Amen! I think this is a good, good sermon, amen. Ah, look at this. Man or life, a uh, purpose, faith. Faith. I have down here for this, I put down, knowing your hope. You have, now, uh, and, and the verse I'm going to use for this is, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith, the substance of things 
hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? So you, you know your hope. You have a hope. You have faith. The, the sub, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The, the wife hoped, I, you know, I do remember. I do remember what I asked you. What are your goals in life? And I said, after she told me her goals, uh, I remember before we had them, I said, uh, uh, what would make you happy? What would, there were three things that would make her happy. Do you remember those three things? Either you do this or do this. She does remember the three things. She wants a baby. She wants a house. This is what would make her happy. And she wanted a car. And not necessarily her own car, her own personal car. You know, uh, so we're not driving a wreck. She wanted a baby that would be a new baby. She wanted a house. It was not a new house, but she wanted a new car. We paid $5,300, I remember, for that Buick. It was, wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? It was the nicest car we ever owned. We paid $5,300. Now they give $10,000 discounts on a truck. The discount. We could have bought two of those cars on the discount they wanted. This is what happened. This is a year, uh, two years into this. I remember what we said. I said to her, you got the, you got the baby. You got the house, and you got the car. And the end result is, what did she want to be? What did I say? What would make you what? Happy. You got, you, you got the baby, you got the house, and you got the car, and you were not happy. You were not happy. Right? Because those are surface things. Those are not important things. The Amen. substance of things hoped for. The hope of heaven. Amen. Knowing Jesus, that I know where I'm going. Folks, this is where, where true joy comes. Right? Amen. Knowing your hope. We got to get moving here. We want to finish on time because we want to get those lines wet. All right. Now, let's move on here. Your faith. Your long suffering. Knowing your trials and the suffering that you go through. 2 Corinthians 11, and Paul went through a bunch of them. We're not going to read them all. Verses 23 through 28. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as full. I am more. In labors, more abundant. All right. He worked nonstop. In stripes above measures. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. And so on and so on. Knowing your trials, folks, people, there are people that have no trials. They, they, uh, do you think Hillary, now there's no right answer to this, do you think Hillary is losing any sleep over the chance of getting striped pajamas delivered to her from Ralph Lauren? <laughs> Do you think she loses any sleep over it? I think she does. Now, maybe she's been told uh, on the inside scoop, don't worry, you're not going there. She's surrounded by oodles of lawyers to buffer this. But if I were her, in the back of my, hair, my, in back of my head, I would hear the jangling of chains. And I would see myself as the striped, you know, the stripes of the bars this way and the striped pajamas going this way. I would see that. But we're not talking about those kind of trials. The kind of trials that life can bring you. The house burnt down. The car got stolen. You got in it. Somebody hit you with their car. You had a bicycle accident. Names off some other trials. You, yes, you got sick. Loss of, Loss of a child. A heart attack. Loss of limbs. Loss of limbs. But we're talking to eyewitness and people who've had personal experience here. 
loss of a limb. Anybody got another trial? Yeah, go ahead. Thrown out of the house and they don't like it. Thrown out, oh yeah. Uh, uh, eviction. Not, uh, evicted, evicted, not excommunicated, eviction, eviction. I got excommunicated. I should have gone back and, and give the priest a, a well, case. That's the, the best thing he did. Pardon? They went on the streets. Now, now listen, you go right down there and you talk to them tomorrow morning when you can. Get down there and talk to, uh, talk to Peggy. Talk to Peggy, not to the other gal. I can't think of the other gal's name. But talk to Peggy. Tell her you know me. Okay. All right. And and ask her ask her what what is the deal? What 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 are the answers to that? But knowing a person's trials, and not just one little trial, this is long suffering. This is a, a an, an endurance of trials. Here's another one. It says here in this list. It says, a long-suffering, the next one is charity. Love that is expressed in action. Knowing your, and I, I just, instead of saying it charity, I could have named off the exact things that were listed. But knowing what is your love? What is your passion? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, but we were gentle among you. Even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Now, Paul said this about himself. As a, as a nurse cherishes her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because you were dear to us. Knowing what is it you love in your charity. What was the, we, uh, the wife and I only went to see one Broadway musical in our life. And I uh, heard ads, I heard the music. I decided, the wife and I decided, why don't we go there? And we took my, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law, we got them uh, tickets also. So I had bought four tickets. I could have charged those, maybe I charged them. And I called the, it was Playhouse, what, what is connected to that uh, big place on West, uh, East 6th Street? What's that? And the theater? Well, it's not where the, it's where the Home and Garden Show would be, or uh, years ago, but there's a theater there, too. It's and not the theater. Public Hall? Public Hall, but it's the, it's the small auditorium that's connected with it. I thought it was just this huge auditorium. Well, there's Public Hall, Public Auditorium. Well, what's the small one that holds 1,400? I don't know. It's in there. All I know is downstairs where the shows were, and there was two places upstairs. Okay, well, we went in there, and I said, no well, this is where the Home and Garden and the auto show is, and all the shows are. This is before the IX Center. And this is where all the shows are, uh, you know, those big uh, ex ex expos are. And I said, I never knew there was a theater here. It was, and it, it went, here's the stage, and it, I told you the story, and it just goes like this. And we got the last four nosebleeds. And every seat in the house was, it was really good. I mean, you could have said you needed binoculars, but the wife and I had a good time. We had a really good time. What was the program? Well, I know you know it. Now, if you didn't remember, then I'd say, wow, you must have been a very memorable time. What was the program? What was the musical called? Well, guess it, it, it was Annie. All right, that tells you about what a person loves. And I knew she really liked it. She had a burden for children. All right, and not just her children. I think we left the, we had a babysitter. I don't even know who the babysitter was. But we left the kids home. We had a babysitter. We drove down there. I mean, who like who here loves to drive downtown? I'm just itching to go down there. You know, you don't like to go down there. You don't like to park the car. But we did have a good time. We, you know, we hated driving down. We hated parking the car. But we had a good time. We bought the LP. Right? We bought the vinyl. Amen. The songs out there are really good. And the girl that played the part, she had a pair of lungs, and they could really act. We we really enjoyed it. Knowing a person and what they love. 
and the charity that Paul had and was for the church, for the people of the church. He, he had this love. So when you get to know a person, is, is what is it that they care about? Now, folks, I don't care about pooch. I, I don't. I don't. But when the pooch is in trouble, who, 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 who did the pooch come to? Pooch came to me. For some reason, they know that I can save the pooch, and the one that loved the pooch can't. This person is not going to do me any good. But there's something about this or that, and it softens the heart of a woman. What softened the heart of Pharaoh's daughter? The cry of the baby. That said a lot for Pharaoh's daughter, right? What is it that you care about? is really important in getting to know this person. Not what they like on their pizza. What's their favorite pizza? What's their favorite game? What's their, what, what's their favorite color? None of that stuff. What's their favorite car? That, that stuff is so superficial. This is really the thrust and the core of what we need to know. Knowing your love. Acts 24. The next one, in our list isn't, uh, well, let's see, 2 Timothy 3, getting back there. What's the next one on our list? Knowing our patience. All right, uh, let's see, a charity, patience. Knowing your patience. So if we go to Acts 24, Paul was uh, on trial. Acts 24, verse 27. You could say you could say that's a trial of long suffering, but we're going to put it for patience. Verse twenty-seven. And but after two years, uh, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. How long was he bound there? It was. I think it was another two years. Knowing a person's patience, so you get to know a person, and you, and you say, uh, you know, uh, well. Uh, what do you study in school? Well, I'm going to school to be a this or whatever that is. And I said, well, how, long, uh, how many years does it take to get that degree? Well, it takes four years. Uh, well, how, many, how far are you on? Well, I'm in my third year right now. I mean, it's patient. Are people patient? How do they take, do you take it patiently? He was in prison. What, what, he could have moaned. He could have groaned. He could have been all, all in a tizzy, but he took it patiently. Knowing a person's patience, and this particular thing was he was in prison, is that, uh, listen, do you have a problem? Do you know of a problem? You can pray about the problem. That's what you should do is pray about the problem. Did the problem go away? The problem didn't go away. The problem is still there. Patient. We need to be patient. You're going to take the bull by the horns, you may regret it. Paul may have made a break for it. Let's make a break for it. We're going to have an inside job here called Houdini to pick the lock. And what would have happened to Paul? He probably would have been killed. Patient. How do you take it? Patience. Knowing your patience. Now, back here, 2 Timothy 3. Patience, your persecutions. All right, you say that to your trials, your long suffering. And we're not going to go back to 2 Corinthians 11 because that's where we're going, you know, about all the trials that he went through. How did he come, you know, beaten? He was beaten. He was ca cast into prison. He was uh, a day and a night in, in the deep. He was shipwrecked. He was this, that. He was a whole pile of stuff. Well, who caused all that? Who did that? His friends? Or his... Not his friends. The opposite of your friend is your what? Knowing your enemies. How do you get to know a person? By knowing who that person's and knowing your enemies. Who are that those person's enemies? If the person you want to know and get to know is friends with Al Capone, <gasps> they're friends with the wrong person. But if their enemy is Al Capone, then you know they got the wrong, the right enemy. Amen. Knowing your enemies. 
they have this, the, the right enemies. It's, it's okay to have enemies, just as long as there's the right one. It tells you a lot about that person. It has nothing to do with what, what is your favorite color. All right, I'm glad you, you said that, you know, because the, you know, the, that was number one on my list, of getting to know a person. Obviously, those are all shot. These are deep things. These tell things that are true. And our last one tonight, persecutions and afflictions. Second Corinthians 12, we don't have to go there. Verse four, verse 12. It's caught up to the third heaven, and if he be lifted up above measure because of it, he could have been proud as a peacock. What did, what did God do to him? He gave him his, uh, uh, the thorn in the flesh, an affliction. Have you ever known people that have afflictions? Knowing a person's afflictions. You know, I don't know everything about you, but some people have real afflictions. Real ones. They're born with polio. They have a, uh, they have a disorder, physical disorder. They have th th things that can go wrong. It, th that is, now these are real things. This is not what you want on your pizza. What you want on your pizza. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. You know, the king and I, what was the woman? Was that Grace Kelly or who's, who's the woman? Deborah Kerr, or Carr? Is it K-E-R-R -R or K, I think it's K-E, Kerr. Is it Kerr or Carr? Huh? I'm, oh, okay. Deborah Carr. And they want, and who sings it? Does he sing it or she, she sings it? Sings it. She sings it, and she's trying to get to know him. She was hired to be a tutor for all his children from all. Oh his yeah, lives. right. Uh, all so one hundred. She's teaching the class first time, and she's singing. And she's getting to know the class. class. Yes. Okay. All right. And most all of that, her getting to know them, a hundred kids, it's going to be pretty superficial. But I tell you this. What Paul writes is, a, I think that's good marriage counsel. How to get to know a person by what they believe, by knowing their lifestyle, by knowing what their purpose is in life, by knowing what is their hope, something out in the future, by knowing the trials that they went through, by knowing what it is that they are, they love, and what they're dedicated, what they what they express and do their charity with, by knowing their patience, something that they've been very patient with, by knowing their enemies, by knowing their afflictions, shake hands before leaving.